welcome back to Fox and Friends happening today in Iowa. Trump, DeSantis, and Vivek Ramaswamy all holding campaign events across the state. And the countdown, it's on as the state's caucuses are just six weeks away. To 2024 GOP candidate for president Vivek Ramaswamy joins us now. Good morning, Vivek. Good morning, how are you? Good, listen, we wanna to talk to you about this position that you've taken, um, quite strongly, talking about carbon capture pipelines running throughout Iowa. You put your other GOP rivals sort of on the spot about it, talk about it, wanted to get their position. But we, earlier today, we, we were, this is an issue that seems to be somewhat peculiar and, and, and um, localized to Iowa when it comes to eminent domain and these pipelines, but also part of the much bigger, broader conversation about climate change. Help us understand this issue. None of us had even heard of pipelines that are carbon capture. Look, I can tell you this is a major issue for people on the ground across northern and western Iowa. What's happened is the global climate cult says that carbon dioxide is the enemy. So the U.S. government has created subsidies that pay people who remove carbon dioxide from met ethanol plants and bury it into the ground. The problem is many farmers don't want that pipeline running across their own land. And so now Iowa is on its way to authorizing eminent domain, taking the land of those farmers or easements across that land without their permission. And that's created a real firestorm here in Iowa. The funny part about this, though, is that nobody is talking about it. No presidential candidate and not even the Republican leadership in Iowa. And the reason why is it comes down to a lot of special interests at issue here. So the reason I'm talking about this is it is another example of the global climate religion, mm -hmm. which I have been criticizing for years, now coming to the backyard of Iowa farmers, literally taking or using their land without permission. In Mississippi, one of these carbon capture pipelines ended up exploding and there was all kinds of consequences. People ended up in the hospital. It affects the land. So this is a real issue and yet another example of an issue that I'm the only candidate who's able to talk about it precisely because I'm not captured by those special interests. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I'm glad that you did bring it up. It does. It is about the climate cult, as you say, but behind all the climate cultists are all these people making lots of money. It just sounds like another boondoggle. You mentioned ethanol. You're in Iowa. I know that's kind of another third rail, but I never expect you to shy away from third rails. What's your position on that? Yeah, so my position on that is I'm actually pro-ethanol, but for a pro-market justification. The best solution of all is and would have been consumer choice at the pump. Just let consumers decide mm -hmm. how much they're able to get in their fuel blend. We don't have consumer choice today. So the second best alternative is look to some markets where consumer choice does exist, like in Wichita, Kansas. You see that consumers do choose when they, give it, when they get the choice, a higher blend of ethanol because it's cheaper and because it's made in America. And so since we don't have consumer choice at the pump as a consequence of oil industry lobbying, I think the renewable fuel standard, the minimum fuel standard set by the government, is the second best alternative. So for me, I'm principled. It's not, I mean, I love Iowans, but I tell Iowans when I meet them this. I'm not saying this just because I love Iowa farmers. I'm saying this because it's the second best pro-market justification, and that's where I land. Vivek, let's get to the brass tacks of the politics because we're about six weeks out. You see the polls, we see the polls. We know yep. it's not about polls, it's about voters. But voters are going to go and, and cast their vote. Um, how do you feel about where you stand? We're showing a poll right now. It shows you at 4% in Iowa. And, if, and, and Scott is out, so now it's really a DeSantis, Haley, yourself there in Iowa. If that poll holds yeah. or is close to it, if you come in third or fourth, what's your path? What, what is, what's the argument you're making to voters? Well, first of all, I don't think that poll is going to hold. I don't see what you're seeing, but I think that's probably a little bit dated. The second thing I would say, though, is these polls are completely missing our supporter base. I was on a college campus last night. We're in a packed room of people. I mean, I, you haven't even heard cheering that loud since a football game. None of these people are polled who are our supporters. So I think this is actually very good for us. The fact that those expectations are set relatively low for me is the perfect setup heading into January 15th. We are going to shatter those expectations. Many independents, libertarians, young people, all of whom have not been to a caucus before, they're coming out and caucusing for us. And so I think we are setting up 
for a major surprise on January 15th. And so What's, wait to see what happens then. And I think that is going to propel us forward in this race. How would you define major surprise, Vivek? What would be success and what would be failure for you in Iowa? Well, at this point, if I'm placing in the top three, that's already shattering the expectations. I think we have a path to potentially win Iowa. When you look at the sheer numbers of people that are coming out to my events, that are coming out to support this campaign, but who have never been to a caucus in recent years, which means they're not polled. And I think that puts us in a position to go further. Here's another thing that I think is bringing a lot of voters to me, especially in this late cycle. A lot of Iowans are undecided, many of them you know, there's two America First candidates in this race. That's Donald Trump and myself. But many of them are seeing me being able to take positions on issues that other candidates aren't able to touch, not just the carbon capture pipeline. I'm the only person that's been able to call for Ronna McDaniel to resign publicly, stand by it, call the climate change agenda the hoax that it is, speak some hard truths about how our money's being spent in Ukraine, about some of their own anti-democratic practices, about the ending of birthright citizenship for the kids of illegal migrants. These are all examples of issues where I am the only candidate in this field that's able to speak those hard truths. And I think a lot of activists here in Iowa, they wait till the end, they break late, but I think they reward a candidate who's actually able to speak the truth, not just when it's easy, but when it's hard, mm -hmm. and even in areas where the Republican establishment doesn't traditionally approve of the message. Wow. Right. However it ends for you, we wish you the best. Um, and I just think it has been really fascinating and really encouraging to see you touch all those third rails. And in many ways, um, just like Donald Trump, uh, change the way people think about the party in that way because I think some of the other candidates are living in another era, I guess, is what I would say. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I, then I'd rather speak the truth and lose an election than to win by playing some political snakes and ladders. But I think it's going to be the winning strategy. So thank you. I appreciate that. You got it. Thanks, Thanks for having Thank you very much.